a long time ago, I bought a Seagate 750 gigabyte external hard drive with eSATA in order to connect it to my TiVo and extend the memory available. Well, it didn't work. Uh, the TiVo upgraded their software and I wasn't able to use this as an extender anymore. Following that uh, debacle, it turned out that this drive basically wouldn't work with anything, uh, whether I used the USB connection or the eSATA connection. And I'm not sure whether my attempt at uh, hacking my TiVo messed it up or it just came faulty from the factory. I wasn't sure whether it was the circuit board or the drive itself that was damaged. But when I bought a new external hard drive enclosure, I decided that I would try to free the hard drive from this enclosure and put it in my new four bay enclosure. So I embarked on tearing this thing apart, which turned out to be about an hour and a half procedure, which I wasn't exactly expecting. So if you want to join me in tearing down a Seagate external hard drive, just ignore that shiny brass screw because that just pulls the little module out of the foot. What you're interested in are the four little rubber feet. And if you just twist those, you'll get access to the screws that you need to remove the base <clears throat> uh, or the bottom of the shoe so that you'll get the view of the internal part of the shoe. And unfortunately, there's still more screws to go, but you can't see them because they're underneath that little shiny aluminum module. If you wanted to be non-destructive, you would need a screwdriver to, which is pretty tiny, in order to get that little aluminum housing off of there. Uh, I didn't really care about being non-destructive, so I just popped the clips off of the side where it snapped together and bent it back, exposing the circuit board. Underneath the circuit board, under the corner, you can see that there is another screw that's necessary to finally remove the foot of the enclosure from the top of the enclosure. So I just bent that circuit board back, stuck my screwdriver in there, unscrewed that screw, and removed the foot exposing uh, the bottom of the enclosure. Once the foot's off, you can flip it out of the way, which gives you access to the main housing. I just used a screwdriver and pried the housing apart. You want to leave the flat side down and the curved side is the side that I popped off using the screwdriver. And when I say popped off, I mean wrestled on the floor and uh, got very frustrated for quite a long time because these clips are on there as though they're never meant to come off. Fortunately, someone has done a little research and figured out how to use a wire clothes hanger and uh, pop the clips sticking the clothes hanger through the vent holes. Unfortunately, I didn't see that until after I had completed the project. It would have been much easier, but my goal was not necessarily to be non-destructive. So if you're clever like the other tutorial, you have popped this off with your wire clothes hanger and if not then you've completed all of your sweat and you've got this cover off. You see the aluminum housing around the drive in the enclosure. Just lift that up out of the enclosure and then peel back the foil on the end and unplug the SATA connection and at that point you've got the drive sitting in aluminum housing and you are almost home. Give those rubber knobs on the side a twist and they pop right off revealing the screws that you need to unscrew in order to free that aluminum housing from the drive. A little bit of prying on that housing and the two halves of the housing just slide apart sort of like taking the case off of a computer cover. 
So at this point, I've got myself a 750 gigabyte hard drive and I can take it over to my new four bay enclosure and see whether or not this little puppy will work. Fortunately for me, it did. And as you can see, when I open up on uh, Windows 7, my computer folder, I can actually see that I have a new 750 gigabyte drive in my system.